Now we will talk about the discharge process of the capacitor. So initially the switch was moved to point A and the capacitor was charged. Now it's point to move uh, to point B. You can see that the battery is disconnected. Now, now we can write the Kirchhoff voltage law for this circuit starting at uh, this point here let's say we start at this point and end at this point and if we say that the current is flowing in this direction this is our convention this must be the voltage drop vr and vc is the voltage drop across the capacitor and remember that i'm using lowercase letters for time dependent current and voltage and writing Kirchhoff voltage law starting here, we have plus VR plus VC is equal to zero. So we can write VR plus VC is equal to zero. And at the same time, we know that VC is related to the charge stored on the capacitor divided by the capacitance C. At the same time, the voltage across the resistor, Vr, is the current, time-dependent current, multiplied by the resistance, and the current is dq dt. All right. Now, <clears throat> for Vr in the KVL equation, I will substitute current times resistance and for current dq dt. So this will be R dq dt. And then for the voltage across the capacitor, I will write the charge stored Q divided by the capacitance C, and this must be equal to zero. And this gives me a differential equation for charge, and dQ dt is equal to minus Q over RC. So I have isolated the charge and the time. So this turns into an integral if I change to uh, dummy variables here. Starting from the initial charge stored on the capacitor Q to the charge stored at time t, integral of dQ prime over Q prime is minus the integral from time t equals 0 to time t, t equals 0 is when the switch is moved to position b. Uh, that is dt prime over rc. Basically, I'm reorganizing this equation. So dq over q and dt over rc on the right hand side. And uh, this basically gives me uh, integral of dq prime over q prime is natural logarithm of q prime which will be evaluated at time t equals to zero capital q to q at time t and this will be on the right hand side i have integral of dt prime which is t prime evaluated between zero and t is t so it's minus t over rc so Putting the, these two limits of integration for natural Q prime, natural logarithm of Q prime, I have natural logarithm of Q minus natural logarithm of capital Q is equal to natural logarithm of Q divided by capital Q, the initial charge stored, is minus T over RC once again the RC time constant here, you can see that the charge as a function of time is uh, Q times exponential minus T over RC. So the charge will, the charge stored on the capacitor will decay exponentially with a time constant RC. And how about the current that flows through the circuit? I of T is dq dt now you can see that when i take a derivative i will obtain minus q capital q divided by tau rc is tau the time constant e to the minus t over tau this is the current as a function of time it's the transient current 
So what happens if I wait long enough? If I wait long enough, you see that the charge stored on the capacitor will decay to zero. And if I wait long enough, the current, which is initially minus Q over tau here, is going to decay to zero as well. So uh, at, as t goes to infinity, to the minus infinity is zero. So at a steady state, I will have no current and no charge stored on the capacitor. So this is a transient response. So we have talked about the RC circuit. First, we attached it to a battery. We have seen that the current uh, decreases exponentially in time, whereas the charge on the capacitor increases with one minus e to the minus t over tau dependence. Now, when we connect it to a short circuit, uh, and we short circuit it to, to ground, uh, the charge on the capacitor will uh, basically flow through the resistor and uh, flow to the ground. So we will have a discharging of the capacitor. And Kirchhoff voltage law tells us that the voltage on the capacitor and on the resistor should add up to zero, which gives us an equation for charge, noting that Q over C is the voltage across the uh, capacitor and I times R or dQ dt times R is the voltage across the resistor. So uh, solving for Q as a function of time, we find it's Q, capital Q e to the minus t over RC. Remember this capital Q was equal to C times epsilon. And uh, so if we take another derivative with respect to time, we find minus Q over RC, minus Q over tau, e to the minus T over tau for the current. So the current is a negative, so it doesn't flow in this direction, it flows in the opposite direction, actually. And it decays to zero as the capacitor discharges to zero charge uh, in the final uh, steady state configuration.